Welcome back. Now, you will no doubt uh, recognise my next guest from her TV role in Emmerdale, but there's another part of her life that she wants to talk about too. Gemma Oten battled with anorexia for 13 years. The eating disorder left her so weak that it brought on a heart attack uh, while she was still a teenager, and she joins me now. And, of course, it's Eating Disorder Awareness Week, and we're... It's all very difficult with coronavirus, which might sort of mm. put it in the shade a bit. But you have mercifully got through your illness, but you were very sick for some years, weren't you? Yeah, um, my anorexia developed at the age of just 10 years old. Um, and my mum and dad took me to the doctor who turned me away because I wasn't low enough in weight to have a problem, or so they deemed. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I was left on a waiting list and the referral kept coming and get, kept getting cancelled. And before I knew it, I was um, admitted to a children's psychiatric unit and told if I didn't eat or drink within 24 hours, I'd be dead. And that battle with anorexia lasted for, for 13 years and I'm very fortunate and, and well now, but I campaign heavily so that no children or adults have to go through the hell that my family did. Um, and that is why this week is so important, but Eating Disorder Awareness Week should be every day. Um, of the year in my eyes because it's got the highest mortality rate of any other mental health illness and one in five people would die as a direct result of it or by taking their own life and Mark like that's shocking and well, we should look, be talking look, I, I more mean, about it. Full disclosure it. here I know a little bit about this because my yeah, daughter of course and we've talked about also it together. and we have talked about it many times but the thing is and mercifully she's um, you know got better but the thing is the figures are alarming yeah. there are more and more people suffering from this yeah. and the resources don't seem to deal with it don't seem to be going up um in the last two years alone the admissions into hospitals has, have increased by 37 percent so as we talked about earlier that means that people are getting to life critical level so these this is admission into a and e yeah into hospitals units yeah, yeah. not to not to eating disorder units yeah. to, to a and e and um, two people are admitted in the UK every hour alone. I mean, that's just shocking. And I really, really need to, to sort of use my platform in, in the best way that I can to get the government and the NHS to listen, to use the funding that supposedly has been promised to help with mental health illnesses, to, to put more of an impact and resource into eating disorders. Early intervention is key. The sooner we can... We can no, um, recognise and, and treat those with eating disorders, the more they have a chance of getting their life back and getting better. So, and, yeah. No, but the, the point... forever. <laughs> yeah, no, but, no, but the, um, the point you're making is that admissions to a &E have doubled, I think, over 10 years, yep. but this suggests this failure of early intervention, and if there were more services... Yeah. Of early and the government, to be fair, have promised more money for. Yeah. But, uh, but if, do we know uh, how much of that is going into eating disorder treatment? That's the thing. I mean, I was I was reading something the other day that even though there's a long term plan by the NHS, that it's still going to be two years down the line that eating disorders specifically are looked like in adult care. Two years, like how how much is it going to increase then? I mean. Mark, I, I do talks around the country. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm living my dreams. I'm in a play at the moment. Ten times table touring everywhere, but alongside that, I go into schools and I talk to the children about eating disorder awareness, body image, and well-being. I go into as many companies as I can because whilst the resource isn't there, we need to be able to bridge the gap. And if I am using my voice in any way, shape, or form for good, it's to tell those kids. I, I stand in front of them, thinking one in five of you are going to develop an eating disorder. Mm, and one in it's it's so scary. And in your case, and um, I think we've got some pictures of you when you were struggling. But um, in your case, did you find it difficult to get the treatment you needed when you needed it? Um, we, we, my mum and dad had to fight tooth and nail constantly over and over to get funding for me to go into eating disorder units and it would be a case of I'd go into an eating disorder unit, I'd get fed up, the treatment wasn't there for me psychologically and I'd get shipped out. And sometimes when I wasn't even ready, the funding, mum would get a call on a Friday to say the funding's run out, you need to come and get her, she's coming home on Monday. And this is a parent who's saved my life three times by recognising that I was on the verge of a heart attack, recognising that my potassium levels were low. It has been a constant, constant battle. She even to the point where she went to John Prescott's home in our... ..cos we're from mm -hmm. Hull, and knocked on his door, you know, 13 years ago and said, you need to help no, my daughter. Point. Well, I was talking to some people today who are still suffering uh, from...
trying to get an appointment. Um, one woman I spoke to this morning said that she's got a letter saying that it's 20 months before she can get people you know, even needing... an appraisal uh, assessment. Yeah, uh, but people are needing to get onto death's door to be able to get help. Where is the logic in that? Where is the, the, the humanity in that? Like, I, and the thing is, I have been talking openly um, since I got Emma Dale for the last 10 years, and I've been patron of my parents' wonderful charity Seed, which is Support and Empathy for Eating Disorders. And I've been talking about this for 10 years, and although there are slight improvements, it's still not enough. No. And I, I get so upset about it still, no. because I want children of my own one day, and God forbid, as you've been through with your daughter, that any parent should have to go through this. Things need to change. All right, Gemma, appreciate you coming in. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you for giving me the time. For that.